Okay, guys, so long awaited nail maintenance video. Okay, and a lot of my nail maintenance information um, comes from a beautiful friend of mine. You guys may know her. She has been on TV, she's been on the Guinness Book of World Records, and she's been on my strange addictions. So I follow what she says very seriously. So this is Yanni. And I know that y'all have seen her before, possibly on TV or whatever. And look how long her nails are. So when I say I get help from her, I get help from her. So let me show y'all some of the stuff that you're going to need, first of all, that I be talking about. All right, so first and foremost, my nail stuff is kind of put up, but Builder Gel. I talk to y'all all the time about Builder Gels. So as your nails grow out, eventually they will start separating from the acrylic. And in order to stop that, you will have to start putting something underneath. Okay, so underneath you want to put, I started out putting acrylic, which Yanni started me out putting acrylic. Okay. The acrylic, when your nails are a little bit shorter, is okay. But as they get longer, um, it'll get a little heavy. So when people always ask, are your nails heavy? They, When they were half this size, I did acrylic and that was fine. But as they started getting longer, I noticed that it did feel a little heavy. You can put gel. You know how you do gel nails? You can put gel underneath. Um, I use a builder gel. So anything that says quick builder gel in a bottle. I use a builder gel in a bottle. I have clear. It doesn't matter by who. I do love Born Pretty though. I love the one from Born Pretty. Um, here is another five in one builder gel. I don't like this one that much. Off of Amazon, um, Aliver. I don't like this one that much. You do have to cure the builder gel under LED light. I would say for three minutes. I like to get it really cured. And then you do have to wipe it off with alcohol because the builder gel gets a sticky residue. And if you don't wipe it off with alcohol, like everything you touch, like little pieces of lint and little pieces of stuff will get under there. But any builder gel in a bottle, I even have a purple builder gel in a bottle. And the reason I do colors because people are always trying to grab my hands and look under my nails and stuff. And sometimes that irritates me. So um, I do pink. I do the pink one and I have a couple of colors of pink. I was doing glitter under my nails, but um, the glitter is hard to get off. Okay. The glitter is hard to get off. If you're going to put glitter under your nails, it looks nice. Um, it does look nice, but it's hard to get off. Now with the glitter, that's not going to be a security bond. Right now, we're talking about a security bond for underneath the nails because the longer your nails get, you will notice that they start separating. You can see a space, and that's something that you need to watch growing your nails out because that is how you will get um, water. That is how you will get water in between in that green water mold that everybody wants to say is a fungus or something it's not if you get water in between there and it doesn't have room to breathe or you can't get it out it's going to turn green that's it you'll be able to tell if you have a nail fungus or if your nail tape did something versus water mold okay um some people still want to call water mold a fungus that's fine i don't care but it's not nasty it's not dirty if water gets in somewhere just like the roof and doesn't get out it's going to create mold Per, per, okay? So the biggest thing you need to watch is your sides. As they grow out, I always check my sides. Let me get some light in here. Now, if you have a really good nail tech, they will build out your sides. Like when I was in Georgia, fancy, um, even before I moved to Georgia, I had a good nail tech girl that every other month, she would build out my sides. 
That's why the longer your nails get, the thicker they're going to be. You're not going to be able to walk around here with these little flimsy nails that everybody are wearing. Not if you're trying to grow your nails out. You're not going to be able to do it. Your nails are going to have to be thick because you have to build up the sides and you have to come over the sides a little bit so that you avoid the separation as your nails grow out. So you cannot have these little thin, cutesy, totsy nails that everybody has. You're going to have to... They're going to have some acrylic on it. They're going to have some thickness to it, okay? My nail tape that I have now, she doesn't really concentrate on my sides that much. So every time I go to her, at least once a month, I will sit home and I will use a light. I use a light, like a light off my phone or get in, under some good light. And I really look at the sides and I try to make sure that I don't have any gaps. I try to make sure that my acrylic is coming all the way over the free edge of my natural nail. Where my natural nail is, I want the acrylic to be covering that. Sorry, y'all. Because if not, that's where you're gonna get cracking, a space, and water mold. And that's why I put the Builder Gel underneath and I put the Builder Gel all the way. Make sure you get your sides with the Builder Gel. If you wanna use acrylic, use a light, light layer of acrylic and you want to make sure you get the sides. That is gonna be the only way you can grow them out with acrylic on them. Now, naturally, people that grow out like their natural nails with no acrylic on top, no acrylic on bottom or whatever, um, I don't really know how they do it without breaking it because your natural nails can't really withstand a lot of what I do in life without some type of protection or coating. I have seen Instagram pages and been on Instagram pages of people with like long natural nails. I know they'll have like eight and want to be broke or uh, seven on this hand. Well, yeah, because they're not putting a coating of anything on it. Their nails are hard and healthy. But if you want long natural nails with and be able to do what I do, which is type all day, work all day, do this, do that, you're going to need acrylic on top and you're going to need something underneath. You can use acrylic underneath. You don't need a whole layer of acrylic like you do on top. You do a thin, light layer of acrylic. You can use a builder gel. There's builder gel in a bottle and there's builder gel in a jar. I like the one in the jar because the one in the bottle is very messy. I started out with the one in the bottle and I still have the one in the bottle. It's so messy. It is so messy. The one in, I mean, the one in the jar is so messy. Okay. Um, so I like to build a jar in the bottle because it's like polish and I can take it and I can just polish underneath. I can get right on the free edge of my nails and seal it. You want to seal. That's what you're doing. You're sealing. Okay. Now, if you're like me, I don't know if y'all gonna be able to see. I glued it, but my skin grows with my nails and it does it on my toes too. That's why I don't get my feet done. If I get my feet done, I tell them to file. You cannot cut my toenails because my skin grows with my toenails. And the same thing with my nails. I don't know if y'all can see it, but my skin grows with my nails. So what happens is, and you can't see it on this one, um, you can see my skin right there, it grows up with the nail and then after a while, it'll get an attitude and it will separate. Like I'll look at my nail and I have a space between my nail and my nail bed. Now, I do know that there's a medical terminology for that for people who have a medical problem. Um, I don't feel like I have a medical problem. I feel like the reason why it does that, because it only does it every so often, is because my skin is growing with my nail and then every now and then it'll detach itself. But for me, which is good, it'll grow back. Um, I used to just wait and let it grow back, but I did talk to Yanni and she says it happens to a couple of hers and she puts glue. So I put glue in this one because I looked at it the other day and my skin had separated from the nail bed a little bit. This one did it about a month or two ago and now it's, it's um, let me see y'all. Now it's completely healed. I don't know if y'all can do it this way. I don't know if y'all can see it because I'm trying to show y'all my nails, but sometimes right here my skin will separate from the nail bed. But this one has grown back, and it does grow back. Now, this one, I banged it the other day, and I feel like the separation came from me banging it. 
like a trauma to it. And I looked that up too. Another reason why your skin can separate from your nail is trauma. And I banged this one. So what I'm going to do today is cut it down a little bit so I can stop hitting it so it can heal. Cause I banged it and I hit it and then I hit it again. So. so I'm cutting it down some so it doesn't um, keep hitting stuff. And my thumb didn't have a dip, and that was driving me crazy. I can't, oh no, I can't stand that. I had to fix my thumb because it didn't have a little dip. All right. So, yeah. So, that's basically what you need to do. You need to, um, if your nail tech is not going to do maintenance, and it's very hard to find a nail tech that does maintenance. It has to be a nail tech that cares about long nails to do maintenance. Um. Like I said, I've had some nail techs that have done maintenance. Like, they'll look at my nails and see I need more acrylic on the sides. I need more acrylic at the bottom. Um, but the one that I have now does not do maintenance. So, I do have to come home and do my own maintenance, but I understand that. I pay for a fill, and I pay for the services I pay for. And I wouldn't even mind going to someone and paying for the maintenance, but it's hard to find someone to do maintenance. Most of these nail techs want to get the most money they can make in a day. They need you in and out their chair. And... I respect it. So if you want to know how to do it at home or you're doing it at home and you're growing your nails out, I would say once your nails get to like a half wavelength or if you start seeing separation, that means it's time for you to start putting something underneath. Okay? If you start seeing separation, drill the separation. Don't just go in with something. It'll grow back. It'll grow out. So if you start seeing your nails separating, drill it. Like take the drill. Drill the separation and see this dark spot? This dark spot is from where I had a greenie. And the greenie was way down here. But as my nails grow out, that greenie is going to move up and then you won't even be able to see it anymore. Or I can cut it off when it gets to the top. But I had a greenie down here where water had gotten in at. And all you do is, and I can drill it out from here, but I'm not going to. I can really take a, a, a pointer drill bit drill this all out and let it grow up but it don't bother me it is what it is it's not even green anymore it's like brown under there the builder gel that i have under my nails is pink it's a flush pink you can use clear or whatever i love melody i think it's melody susie's builder gel it's very thick i like a thick builder gel that's why i didn't like the other one that i showed y'all born pretty's builder gel is very thick i like a thick builder gel because then i only need like one coat um like I said, you're going to put it under the lamp. I do it for like 90 seconds, three times. And then I take a Q-tip, dip the Q-tip in alcohol, and I wipe underneath because it's sticky afterwards. It's almost like a top coat. It's sticky afterwards, and it'll pick up every little piece of lint or whatever. And you only need to retouch like once every three months. Like maybe once every three months, I will drill the Builder Gel out. Now, it'll start peeling away itself sometimes. The builder gel, it'll start peeling away. You'll notice, like, I look down and the builder gel is peeling up, and I can just peel it right off. That's when I know it's time for me to go in with a whole nother coat of builder gel. And all I do at that time is I take my drill, um, I take a very thin drill bit, like this, just a thin one. I go underneath each nail, I drill it, go underneath each nail, drill, do maintenance, see where, see where I have any separation, see where I have any um, lifting. Go underneath there, and then I go with my builder gel, and I go over each one. And that's only, it's not bad, because it's really like once on every three months or so. Now, like I said, every month, you need to be checking to see if you see any separation. Because if you see any separation just like on one nail, go ahead and drill that out a little bit, and put some more builder gel, okay? So, really, that's how I maintain them and get them to grow out. You could take hair and nail vitamins. I haven't taken hair and nail vitamins in about three months. The last time I ran out, I just didn't get any more. My nails have always naturally grown pretty quickly. 
um, my mom's as well. So, um, I haven't taken any, but I said as I get older, I know I'm lacking probably certain vitamins and stuff I need. So, I do need to get back to taking my, like, hair and nail vitamins, my vitamin D, my vitamin B12, and all of that. I'm going to get back to it, but, yeah. And then, as you decide what length you want to get to, you will just keep them trimmed, you know. In whatever length you get to, you, you know, you just trim the top. So... I think that's it. If I missed anything or if you have any maintenance questions, put it down below. I will answer it or I will do another video. Um, I have tried glue. Glue doesn't work. Glue doesn't last. With washing dishes, washing your behind, washing your hair, washing your... The glue doesn't work. People try to glue underneath. That's why you're getting a water mold. You need something thick like acrylic, a builder gel. Um, what's that other thing everybody's using? Not build a gel. What's the other nails people get? I don't know too much about the fiber um, nails, the fiber something. Um, let me see. What's the other nail? Because there's different type of nail things out now. But I'm going to tell you what I know. What I know is you can use acrylic. You can use a gel, like a hard gel. Or you can use a builder gel. Dip powder, I wouldn't suggest dip powder underneath. You can try it. I wouldn't suggest um, dip powder underneath. Gel X, I have not tried it. I'm not too familiar with what Gel X is all about. But um, you can try it if you want to. Um, also, do not forget to do cuticle oil underneath. At least once a week, put cuticle oil underneath. A lot of people forget that. You still need to treat underneath your nails. We do the top part and forget all about underneath. Cuticle oil underneath once a month. Do not do cuticle oil the day before you're going to get a feel or feel it. Okay. Cuticle oil once a week underneath as well. It keeps them from getting dry and it keeps them healthy. Um, a lot of nail techs will tell you to put cuticle oil underneath as well. Just not before you know it's time for you to go get your nails done. Okay. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Um, if you do get a greenie or anything like that, they have the, everybody has it. Amazon, Sally's, everybody has the little anti-fungal, um, stuff you can use. Um, tea tree oil is awesome. Tea tree oil is awesome for the greenies, but even though a greenie, it's, it's kind of a fungus because it's a mold because you have created a, a water mold under your nails. But any type of fungal, nail fungal, tea tree oil, drill it out, dry it, make sure it's dry, do the fungal stuff. I do it underneath too. I keep telling y'all, stop forgetting about underneath your nails. And the greenie will clear up, dry up. If you're growing your nails out, the greenie will grow out. You can drill it out and you are good to go. If your whole nail is green, you have heard people say, leave the nail off, let it breathe, whatever. I'm sorry. I've never done that. I've had greenies and I've moved on with my life. That's just me. Don't take my advice. Do what you do. Okay. If I get a greenie here, I'm going to drill it as much as I can without hurting myself. I'm going to file it. I'm going to treat it. I'm going to put the stuff on it. And then I'm going to go on with my, I'm going to seal it. I'm going to make sure it is sealed where no more water can get in. And I'm going to move it forward. So, but if you're just starting out and you feel like you want to let your nail breathe after a greenie, it depends on how big it is or whatever, you can do that. Let your nail breathe and then go back to your regularly scheduled program. All right. So, I think that's it. That's the main stuff that I do. All right, any questions, anything that y'all think of that's happening to you that I didn't say, um, comment down below and I'll answer it for you, okay? And please, please share this video because there are so many people that are not knowledgeable of it. I'm also going to do a shower video at the end of this because I might do a different video. Because people are always ask me, how do you take a bath? How do you take a shower? Dude, I need to educate some people, so stay tuned. Hit subscribe.